IBM's Computational Biology Center is located at the Watson Research Center. It does work at the intersection of information technology and biology. The key projects in Computational Biology Center are, are a spectrum of things. For example, work in uh, systems biology, in genomics, in uh, protein science and molecular simulations, in proteomics, neuroscience and neuroimaging. We have more data today than we had yesterday and we are guaranteed to have even more data tomorrow. Making sense of this data is one big challenge. A second challenge is in constructing meaningful models that abstract useful knowledge from biological systems and allow us to study them in some detail and make predictions on how biological systems would behave. A third challenge is in instances where we know something about the biological system. How can we do enough through simulations to learn something meaningful in biology? Cardiac models are uh, generally considered to be one of the most advanced areas of systems biology. The heart is a very complex organ in that it's both electrical and a mechanical organ. There's also valves and uh, other complicating issues. This is a tremendous computational challenge. With the Blue Gene, we've been able to implement and execute cardiac models. So uh, simulations that would have taken on the order of two weeks now can be done on the order of hours. We are working with uh, Mars Corporation and the USDA on uh, sequencing the cacao genome. Cacao is a plant that produces cocoa, which is the main ingredient that goes into chocolate that we all enjoy. Uh, the goal of looking at the genome of uh, cacao is to understand what variations correlate uh, to produce uh, desirable traits such as uh, tolerance to pests and increased yields in the face of drought. What we are trying to do with the DNA transistor is to sequence DNA. We want to control the passage of DNA through a pore. This device that is formed by a pore and a few electrodes allows us to make a DNA go through this little pore and be trapped by the electric field created in these electrodes. As much as trapped, we also can get rid of this electric field and the DNA will traverse through the pore a little bit and we trap it again. And each time we trap, the DNA, we can do something with it. For example, interrogate each base and ask, are you a C, a G, an A or a T? And that will allow us to sequence the DNA. Projects in structural biology include uh, simulating structures of proteins and protein-protein complexes. So these are three-dimensional structures that we simulate using supercomputing technology such as BlueGene. And the goals of uh, such study is to understand how protein structures behave and what variation in the protein structure results in what kind of biological change. We are engaged in two such projects. The first of which I want to describe is work we are doing on the protein called rhodopsin. We study the protein rhodopsin because it is the protein in the retina of our eyes. Its job is to receive a photon of light and transduce that into a chemical signal. Using protein simulations, we ask the question, how does rhodopsin do this job? The second area of research is protein simulations in influenza. Influenza virus succeeds in making infections by constantly accumulating new mutations. Using sophisticated protein simulations, our goal is to predict what mutations are likely to occur on influenza virus and then what new antibodies or vaccines could be developed to recognize these as yet unseen mutations. There are several questions we try to address. For example, why avian flu H5N1 only binds to avians, not to humans? And why some mutations will cause the escape of the antibody neutralization. And the third type of problem we are working with University of Rochester at this moment was why some of the T cell response will attack some of the virus um, peptides, but not the others. We collaborate with neuroscientists around the world to build models of how 
uh, pieces of the brain assemble and behave to give rise to the complex functionality that we associate with the behavior. Uh, for example, we are studying the emotion control system in the brain that gives rise to things like fear and phobia. One specific research project we have is working uh, with a group in France called Neurospin. And what we're trying to do is to develop techniques that can distinguish between schizophrenic patients and normal patients. What we're trying to do is to understand or characterize the functional relationships that different areas of the brain have relative to each other. Proteomics involves actually studying the proteins as they appear in the body, including small modifications to them that might happen related to disease. The hard part is actually understanding that data and finding the patterns that might have the biological signal you're after. Our strategy of working in this space of computational biology is to collaborate with researchers and institutions around the world, take our expertise at the intersection of information technology and biology, combine that with bench biologists and experimentalists and leading scientists in this field, and together make progress that we wouldn't be able to do by ourselves alone.